Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Uh, in today's video, I'd like to talk about the Bridgeport Cherry Head. Uh, there's not too many videos on this on the interwebs. There's a couple videos on the actual machine in operation. But the videos that I've seen, they really don't have any detailed information on the Cherry Head. So, uh, well, what is the Cherry Head? The Cherry Head is uh, mostly was mostly used for tool and die making, uh, probably mold making. And what does it do? It, uh, it does concave, convex shapes. Um, today with the three, four, five axis CNC machines, it's super outdated, it's really old school. You're not gonna find too many people that will use it for anything. But in this instance, uh, I came up with a job. I bought a, a Bridgeport Prototrack CNC and the arm support for the pendant uh, is all busted up. Someone had welded it. It kind of slides back and forth on the ram of the Bridgeport. The pendant itself is large and heavy and every time I move the pendant it's tilting backward or forward which in turn makes the pendant swing and it's just it's just a disaster. So. Uh, what I decided to do was I decided to make a new uh, shoulder adapter. So just a piece of aluminum that's going to sit on top of the ram that's going to be curved. So it kind of fits the contour somewhat of the, of the ram. And we're going to mount our pendant arm to that. Uh, so that being said, that's what we're going to do. Now, how do we use this and what are some of the features of this? So this, this particular unit is uh, it's a one-third horsepower. It's fortunate enough to get a single phase. Uh, I have another one that's a three phase, but this one's nice. It's plugged in. It's hooked up. I'll turn it on for you. The head is super quiet. It's nice. So the, the actual... Uh, machine itself or the attachment itself is in great shape. You can see all the waste scrapings are just like brand new. Motor's quiet. Uh, it has six speeds. There's six sheaves on the pulley. So you can manually adjust the speed. Slowest speed being 275. Fastest speed being 4250. Uh, and it's kind of similar to the old Bridgeport J-Head where you, know, you loosen the two motor bolts and you just kind of slide it a little bit, you place the pulley where you need to, put some tension on it and tighten the bolts back up. Uh, let's talk about the collet. The, uh, there were three different flavors. The, uh, some of the units took uh, brown and sharp number seven collets. Some of the units took uh, Morris Taper two collets. And some of the units took BS3 collets, and I think that's a Bridgeport collet. Uh, I don't have all three collets, and I'm a little bit unsure of what my unit actually takes. I have a brown and sharp number seven collet, and it seemed to fit in there nicely, but I had quite a bit of stick out under the spindle. So I went on eBay and I ordered a couple of uh, Pretty cool. Uh, Morris Taper 2 and I ordered a couple of uh, BS3 collets and they're coming in a day or two. So I want to make sure I have the proper collet before I start to try to cut any metal. Uh, okay, so now let's get to how this unit works. It's, it's, it's a full featured unit but it's really stupidly simple. You can adjust the unit um, in any type of a, gra a gr degree, it's got a full, fully articulated knuckle in the back, which means you could turn the head up, you know, this is this being zero degrees, you could turn it 90 degrees this way, 90 degrees this way, and it also spins like a regular bridge port, so you can spin it at any angle. Um, being that it's a one-third horsepower, I think it's for very it's it's not for very heavy duty cuts. It's you know more of a delicate cuts. And what I'm trying to do, I think I'm gonna push it a little bit, but I'll I'll take, you know, 
minimal cuts on the machine just just to uh, just to keep it happy. Now, uh, how the machine works? So it really the wheel only turns. That's it. If you use the top 180 degrees, oh, let me let me actually bring this down so you can actually see the quill. So if you were to take the top 180 degrees, you can make a convex cut on an object or the top of a bowl. Now if you were to use the lower 180 degrees, you can make a concave feature and a piece of metal. And then being as you could spin the head any, any, every which way you wanted to, you can make all kinds of crazy pockets. But you got to understand that that would all be in, you'd have to calculate that using your X, your Y, and the way the head is set. So it'd be a lot of mathematical equations, all done manual. So I would, I would try to keep away from that. I, you know, that's probably beyond me. But uh, and the only adjustment would be on this machine is there's a hand wheel here. And as you turn the hand wheel, you're going to move this up and down. And that is going to change the diameter of your cut. So what I'm looking to do is I want to take this piece of metal piece of aluminum. Now I also got this tool which I was able to take put that on the Bridgeport RAM and get an idea of what kind of curve I need here. So what I really want to do is I just want to take this piece of metal here and make a cut similar to this. This way I can have this piece on the top of the ram on the bridge port and it'll you know it'll add some strength to the single bolt that's going to hold the arm i probably in all honestly don't need it i could probably get away with just the one bolt but what's happening with the unit i have now it's just kind of rocking a little bit and every time it rocks i shouldn't even say it rocks like this it rocks it rocks like this and then the thing is swinging. So I, I want to make it make it nice. So I figure that's a good opportunity to use this attachment and show you guys how it works. Um, so I think that's going to be the end of part one. Wait for the collets to come in. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and set the machine up so I get the diameter of the cut I want. And then I'm going to show you how I, I set the diameter. I'm going to show you how I set, uh, well, I want to make sure that the, the part is obviously parallel to the table, but then I also want to make sure that the head is parallel to the table. So I'm going to show you how I tram that in. And we're going to cut the part, and I guess at that point, I'm going to be able to remount my pedestal and move on to the next job. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. If you like it, please like, subscribe, give me some thumbs up, and uh, I'll be back soon with part two. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, and I hope you guys are making something cool in your shop.